Ever since watching Bracky's video on how many rigid bodies Unity can support, I've been curious to try the same test on Godot. Can Godot, which supports two different open source 3D physics engines, keep up with or even exceed the performance of Unity's built-in physics engine? In this video, we're going to answer the question, how many rigid bodies can Godot support? And we'll look at the latest 3.3 release series, which recently received a huge performance upgrade to 3D physics through the backporting of dynamic broad phase optimization from the 4.0 series. Godot supports two different open source physics backends. The first is the popular open source bullet physics engine, and the second supported physics backend is known as Godot Physics and has received significant upgrades and performance improvements in the 3.3 and 4.0 releases of Godot. Let's jump right in and start with Godot 3.3.2 and in the project settings, I'm going to select the built-in Godot Physics and disable the dynamic broad phase optimization. This will put us back on being on par performance-wise with the older Godot 3 releases so that we can have a baseline to see how much Godot has improved. According to the notes in the GitHub pull request, the broad phase optimizations resulted in a 6.5 times faster frame rate. I'm also going to change the physics FPS to 50 for all of the tests to match Unity's physics rate. This will give us a 20 milliseconds physics update. And to give Godot the best possible advantage, I'm using a multi-mesh instance for the rendering of the cube since we may have several hundred or thousand meshes on screen at any given time. All the code will be linked in the description below. Godot Physics handled 500 rigid bodies without breaking a sweat. No FPS drops. Godot Physics started having trouble at 750 bodies with the drop to 17 FPS towards the end, but it quickly recovered. Finally, 1000 rigid bodies is just too much for Godot Physics, which starts out well, but drops to 4 FPS and stays there. Let's turn on dynamic broad phase optimizations and try again. With broad phase optimization enabled, Godot Physics easily handles 1000 rigid bodies without any issue. At 1250 cubes, even with broad phase optimization enabled, Godot physics struggles, momentarily dropping to 17 FPS. This is almost double the performance we saw with BVH off. Finally, 1500 cubes is just too much even with the BVH optimizations enabled. And though it starts out well, we end up with a stuttering mess at around 5 FPS. So what does this all mean? Should we give up any hope of Godot handling more than 1,500 rigid bodies? What about the 10,000 barrel simulations in Crisis? Will we ever be able to come close to this number in Godot? Well, I'm not ready to give up yet. Let's switch the physics backend to bullet and try again. And the bullet backend easily handles 1,500 rigid bodies. So let's bump it up. At 1750 rigid bodies, bullet falters dropping to 6 FPS towards the end and staying there. In Bracky's video, he got a major performance boost by exporting the project and running the executable. So let's give that a try. All right, we got a minor speed boost. At 1750 rigid bodies, we dropped to only about 10 FPS on the export. Unfortunately, at 2,000 rigid bodies, even when exported, the bullet physics engine breaks down to about 5 FPS. I tried 2,500 cubes for fun, and as expected, it was nearly a slideshow at 3 to 4 FPS. Time to compile and fire up Godot 4.0. I noticed that there were a few more physics options available. I set the physics process to run on a separate thread. Unfortunately, it seems bullet physics was removed from 4.0. So all that we're left with is Godot physics. And I was quite disappointed that physics in Godot 4 seems to be less performant. No doubt due to the missing bullet physics engine. So it looks like 1750 is the maximum number of rigid bodies Godot can handle on my system at a 50 hertz physics update rate. But what if I lower the physics rate to, say, 15 Hz? We know the frame time, or the amount of time Godot has to update the physics on each frame, 
is 1 over the physics update rate. Well, at 50 hertz, we have 20 milliseconds per physics update. But at 15 hertz, we have over three times as much time to perform each physics update. Back in Godot 3.3.2 at 15 hertz physics update, 2500 blocks and 2750 blocks run mostly smooth with some frame drops. But when we try 3000 rigid bodies, even at 15 hertz, Godot struggles. The problem with dropping the physics rate is you can now see each physics update. Right off the bat, it's obvious the Unity physics engine is more optimized than Godot's. Unity handled 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and even 6,000 cubes inside the editor without too much visible slowdown. There were some drops in frame rate down to 10 FPS, but overall the smoothness was much better than in Godot. Even though the minimum frame rates are similar to Godot's, the average frame rates are much better in Unity, and the motion is significantly smoother with a larger number of cubes on screen. Even at 7,000 cubes, the frame jitter seemed to be much better than Godot at 2,000 cubes. And finally, at 8,000 cubes, we start to notice major frame drops inside the Unity editor. So the conclusion we can draw is that Unity's physics engine is much more optimized than Godot's. Does this mean we can't use Godot to make awesome apps or games? Actually, it's quite the opposite. Godot being open source means that we can continue to expect improvements to the code as contributors continue to optimize and enhance the physics engine. Already we saw major improvements to Godot's internal physics engine, and I expect we will continue to see such improvements. Furthermore, not every application or game requires physics for every mesh. Here on screen we see over 50,000 box meshes being animated in Godot with zero frame drops. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and don't forget to like and subscribe to keep getting new content.